Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock. It's time for another video. As you can see, I'm still here in Columbus, uh, still continuing to film with Penguin Magic, but I've managed to find time this morning to do another video. And I thought today it'd be kind of interesting to do an alternative Q&A uh, and just kind of answer a couple of questions that I normally wouldn't answer on the normal Q&A. So for you guys that are new to the channel, every Sunday at 12 o'clock, I do a Q&A where I take everyone's questions and I try to answer them to the best of my ability. They started off being about 15 minutes long and now they run somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half because there's so many questions. And I do try to avoid the negative questions. By the way, I've got a bit of a cold, so I uh, picked up a cold over here, so I'm a little bit sniffly. Um, but uh, yeah, I... I, I basically try to avoid any negative questions, uh, purely because I try to make the Q&As as positive as possible. And these days, to be honest on the channel, I very rarely put negative content out there. By negative content, I mean rants. I used to do a lot of rants on this channel. Don't really do that anymore. I'm kind of more about wanting to try and give advice and give back and so on and so forth. However, uh, I do get questions from time to time that I just kind of push to one side and ignore. And I was looking through YouTube this morning. It's kind of seven o'clock in the morning now. Woke up at six. And uh, I thought maybe it'd be worthwhile just this once to kind of address some of the questions that I get that I would normally ignore on the Q&A. So let's do it. We're going to do an alternative Q&A. It's not going to be a very long video because, frankly, it's going to piss me off if I answer too many of these questions. But uh, let's have a look. Okay, so I'm also not going to say names. I don't really want to say names. You know, I don't, in the Q&A, the actual normal Q&A on a Sunday, I do give names, but I don't want to really highlight any particular one person. I'm just going to read their question. I'm sure they're fine with me reading it because they left it in a public forum. So the first question uh, came up a little bit recently and it was on a review show me and Ryan did. And uh, this guy said, Craig, why do you lie, mate? I'm just reading it here. You don't buy everything. You literally have a video saying you could ask Alakazam for Scott Perry to go on their review list where you get items to free for review. Why should people believe your reviews if you're lying about something like that? Sounds to me like you only give good reviews for free products. I 100% believe that. Okay, well, dude, if you 100% believe that, you're complete and total dickhead. And I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel, because here's the thing. I'm going to send this video over to Michael. So Michael, who works in my office, what I do when I finish this video, I'm going to send it over to him. And I'm going to, also going to send him some screenshots from my Penguin account, um, showing you how much I've spent over the last few weeks. I buy everything. Now, not just from Penguin. I spent a lot of money with Alakazam. I spent a lot of money with Vanishing Ink. It is absolutely... A financial stupid thing for me to do to do this review show. I'm one of the few people that do buy pretty much everything. And I spend an absolute fortune doing so. Like, I spend a fortune. And most of the stuff that me and Ryan review just gets tossed in the bin. Or we just shove it in a drawer and we don't do anything with it. It's very rare that something will hit our repertoire. It happens occasionally, but not all the time. I spend a small fortune on magic to review products so that I can give people my honest opinion. And then I have people like you that turn around and say I'm a liar and that I don't actually buy anything. Hopefully, Michael's putting the proof on the screen now to show that you're a dickhead. And I call you a dickhead because... It's kind of upsetting to me that you come on a public forum without even knowing who I fucking am and call me a liar. You call me a liar? You don't even know what I spend on magic or what I don't spend on magic. You get one comment and you make a decision there and then on the type of person that I am based on one comment that I made. And here's the problem with social media. Here's the problem with people like you commenting on YouTube and commenting on the Magic Cafe and commenting on Facebook and social media. The problem is that becomes the narrative. When you put that on there, anybody who kind of doesn't like me or doesn't like the thing that I do, they go on there and look at their comments and they go, yeah, that's right. Craig doesn't buy his stuff. He's a liar. And then it just spreads out of control. Well, hopefully, like I say, Michael's putting that stuff on the screen. I make about £400 a month from YouTube. 500 if I'm lucky. 
the amount of time and effort that I put into it and the amount of money that I spend on props and products that I don't even use just so I can review them, it absolutely doesn't make it worth at all. It's not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. And many, many times my wife has told me to stop. She's like, why are you bothering doing this? We pay a fortune on shit that you're not even using. Now, in terms of what you were saying about uh, putting Scott Perry on a, um, on a list where he can get free products, that's just something that's done in the industry. A lot of people will get sent free products from various different magic dealers. That's called marketing. So what happens is when a company has spent a lot of time and effort and money on a product and they've bought it to market, they want people to review it because the more people that will review it, the more people will see those reviews, the more people will be interested in buying that product. So a lot of companies like Alakazam will have a list of people they'll send review copies to. I send review copies of my stuff to people that I know will accept free submissions. People like Magic Orthodoxy, people like Steve Faulkner, people like The Wizard Product Review. All three of those channels get sent stuff for free. When I was on The Wizard Product Review, I used to get stuff for free. Guess what? I work with Murphys. They didn't send me anything for free. They never do. I work with Penguin. They didn't send me anything for free. They never have. Occasionally, Alakazam will send me something. I won't ask, but a parcel will come through the post and it'll have a trick in it. And I'll say, hey, Pete, what's this? And he's like, oh, we've got this new trick. We thought you might like to have a look at it. But I always mention that when I do the review for that product. Rarely, rarely, rarely do I get sent something for free. Case in point, I've just been working on the Penguin stand at Magic Live and I saw a really cool headline prediction. I talked about it in my video on Monday about the coolest things that I saw at Magic Live. It's this torn and restored newspaper. It's like a mini illusion. It's $350. I bought one myself with my own money. And to be clear, I was there working for Penguin on the Penguin stand. And then I've been in Columbus working with Penguin, producing products for Penguin. And I still paid for that fucking trick myself out of my own pocket with my own money. I'm working with TCC at the moment on a product. But you know what? At Magic Live... Ryland wanted a new set of linking rings and he wanted a, uh, a couple of other things. Um, so I went over to TCC, I went and looked at their linking rings and I bought a couple of things for Ryland and guess what? I paid for it with my own money. This isn't really a problem about like, um, um, you know, what, the issue that I have here is you just making shit up about me. You don't know me, you don't know what I do, you don't know how I do pay or don't pay for my products. It is a standard thing in the community. So when I said to Scott Perry, hey, would you like to go on the Alakazam list? I know there's a list at Alakazam. I'm not on it because I make a big deal of wanting to pay for my own stuff. I could show you the amount that I've spent with Pete Nardi. I probably spent more with Alakazam than they've paid me for every product I've put out because I've bought stuff to then review. But I know that lots of others aren't like that. Steve Faulkner doesn't pay for his stuff. David Penn doesn't pay for his stuff. Wayne Fox doesn't pay for his stuff. Paul Longhurst doesn't pay for his stuff. David Kern doesn't pay for his stuff. The list goes on and on and on and on. So I offered Scott Perry a chance to go on the Alakazam um, uh, review list because I know I could do that. He didn't want to. That's absolutely fine. Just because I make that statement, dickhead, doesn't necessarily mean that I don't pay for my own tricks that I review on my channel. And it definitely, 100%, and, and, and even if... I, right. First of all, I don't appreciate you calling me a liar without knowing context. But secondly, not only do you call me a liar, but you're telling me that I'm lying to the entire community in front of my kid, in front of Ryland. Because I say on the review show all of the time, hey, we don't buy this, do we? We don't buy this. And, and Ryland will go, uh, sorry, we buy this. And Ryland will go, yeah, we buy this. So in other words, not only am I lying, I'm teaching my kid to lie. Fuck you, man. No, I am not lying. I buy 99% of the stuff I review, and I don't appreciate you calling me a liar. This is why I don't do these alternative Q&As, because people like that, people like you, just drive me up the fucking wall. Okay, about three or four people have made this uh, statement over the last few months. And I've just ignored it every single time. But it's some variation of a theme. And, and, and the variation is, 
Um, I'm sick of seeing Craig Petty. He's on everyone's products. Why is it that I see him everywhere? Why can't he just fuck off? Or some variation thereof. Sometimes they're more polite. Sometimes they're less polite. I know a guy that I had a run-in with a couple of years ago has been posting on Facebook saying that he's sick to death of seeing me everywhere. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's, that's a thing that comes up probably once a month, comes up fairly quite often. So why don't we address that, shall we? Why don't we address the fact that I'm everywhere on everybody's um, videos? Again, the people that make this statement, like, oh, Craig's just everywhere. Why does he have to be on everyone's products? Why does he have to be uh, on this product? Why does he have to be on that product? The reason is, there's two reasons. There's two reasons. It's not because I'm trying to haul myself out to everybody. There's a couple of different reasons, right? So the first reason is because I've been asked by either the company producing the product or the creator that's created the product in the first place. And the second reason is I'm trying to give back to the magic community. Oh, Craig, you're not trying to give back to the magic community. That's bullshit. You're getting paid to do these. Uh-uh, fuck off. No, I'm not. Right, to be clear, you've just seen Sticks come out by Eric Stevens. Sticks is one of the best hot rod um, products that you've ever seen, right? Sticks. Let's talk about Sticks for a minute, shall we? Eric is amazing. He's one of the best magicians that I've ever seen. I'm a big fan of Eric. I gave Colour Sticks in its first year of Magic TV, Trick of the Year. I love Colour Sticks. I love Eric Stevens. And I'm one of the I'm the person who introduced Eric Stevens to Harry Nardi at Magic Live. The reason this has come out through Alakazam is because of me, right? So Alakazam, he uh, Eric says to our uh, Eric says to Alakazam, "Hey, we like Craig. Uh, I'd like Craig to be on the project with me. Would that be possible?" So they ring me up and say, "Would you like to be on the project with 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 Eric?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course, I would love to." So now I'm going down to Alakazam, which is a four hour drive. I'm paying to stay down there so that I can film this stuff while I'm down there. I'm creating new handlings and new bits, like if you've seen the project, the, the transposition and the, uh, uh, the color changing knives routine and all the non-sleeving stuff. I'm creating a bunch of stuff to go onto the project. And I'm not getting paid anything for this, by the way, nothing. Just so you know, I'm not getting, and I haven't asked for anything. I wouldn't expect anything. I wouldn't expect anything. I'm not charged anything. I'm not, I probably paid to be on this project to help Eric because he is a friend, right? I'm not getting anything from this, nothing. And I'm, I'm, and then while I'm down there, my dog passes away and I stay down there until I finish the project. And then I come back up and I put my dog down because I'm told that my dog needs to be put down. And I said, Sarah, leave it 24 hours. I need to finish this and then I'll come back up. And then Eric was only in the country for a couple of days and they haven't got enough video of live performances. So I, I offer to go out and spend the day getting live performances. If you watch the trailer and you see me doing some magic with color sticks, that's, I went out and I did that for the whole day getting live performances so that Alakazam could use it on the project and I didn't get paid a penny. Nothing. I didn't ask for anything. Because I'm a big believer in this industry that if you help people, people will want to help you in return. So Color Sticks is a perfect example. Another perfect example is you're going to see a trick come out soon through Murphy's Magic with Rich Relish. I literally um, spent days with Rich um, putting routines together for that project, filming the tutorial with him, going out and getting live performances for the project afterwards. Like all of that, didn't get a penny, didn't ask for. Rich is a good friend, I wanted to help him. When you saw me on Mark Bennett's um, um, uh, trick with the uh, ring going into the Smarties, get smarty. I didn't ask for anything in return. I created the routines, a, a lot of the routines, as you'd know if you've seen the tutorial. I went to, the, uh, I went to Smoke and Mirrors, I, I did the tutorial, I did some live performances, everything, didn't ask for anything in return because Mark Bennett is a good friend. Every single time that you see me on a product that's not my product, I'm not getting paid for that at all. I'm doing it because I believe what goes around comes around. So when you saw me bring out Cube 52, for example, and Pete Nardi was on the tutorial giving routines for Cube 52, 
It's because I've helped him out with a project in the past. When you saw Peter Turner on, on Evoke, or you saw um, David Jonathan on, uh, on the Infinity Deck, or whatever it may be, I believe in helping people so that if I then go to them and say, hey, can I have a favor? I've got this product coming out. Would you mind contributing something? They're more likely to say yes. But to say that I'm everywhere, maybe I am, but to say it in a negative way, every single one of these projects that you ever see me on that's not actually my project, I'm not getting paid for it. I have to sit there, create the routines, film the tutorial, a lot of the time film the performances, and I'm getting nothing in return. I'm getting no financial benefit in return. I'm doing it because I think I can add value to the project. And if I don't think I can add value to the project, I'm not going to do it. Over here at Penguin, I've been filming for the last few days, I think 10, maybe 11 projects. I think only six of them are mine. Only six of them are mine. Maybe six, seven, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of them that aren't mine. That aren't mine. I've been filming a project here for Josh Birch. I created the routines, I filmed the tutorial, I went and did the live performances, I've done the pitch, I got the, um, I got the B-roll, I've done everything, not asking for anything in return. Just filmed the product for Nicholas Lawrence, not asking for anything in return. I, other than for people to know that I like helping and, and, and that I believe I can add value to that project. So for people to turn around to me and say, oh, Craig's everywhere, as if this is a fucking bad thing, Again, it comes back to the fact that you don't know the scenario. It comes back to the thing that you don't know the situation. It comes back to the thing that you, you assume. You assume that I'm getting paid a fortune to be on all these projects. It would be far easier. It would be far easier for me to not go on any of those projects. But I'm not that type of guy. My wife will tell you, I can't say no to people. If people ask for my help, I will help them and I will do everything that I can. I will move hell and high water to help them. But to assume that I'm getting paid a fortune and that I'm everywhere and whoring myself out, that is complete and total bullshit. I go out and I help where I can. And if I think I can add value to a product and it's somebody that I, I feel that I've got a relationship with, I would help them. If Alakazam call me and ask me to do something for them, I will drop everything and I will do it at the drop of a hat because I consider Pete Nardi a friend. If Murphys asked me to do something for them, I would drop everything and do it because I consider Lloyd Barnes and Javier Fuenmayer a friend. If, if Penguin Magic asked me to drop, anything, drop everything and come over and help them, I'd do so because everyone at Penguin Magic, Dalton, Eric, Nick, Sean, Mandy, Gally, I consider them all friends. I would do anything to help these people, but then to have it taken and thrown back in my face, I don't think that's fair, but again, that's just my opinion. Okay, so I'm gonna read out another, um, another uh, uh, question here. It's not really a question, it's more of a statement. Uh, and it was on a, uh, a review uh, that I did. And I know the guy's gonna comment on this video, even though I'm not gonna say his name, I know he's gonna comment on this video because he always does. Um, but the only reason I'm bringing him up is because of the reply that he gave me. So uh, it, it was on a review about um, magic. It was on a review about a particular magic trick that was very expensive. And, uh, and he says, too much money. The trick is in many magic books uh, and is getting to it, uh, it is many books and magic is getting too expensive. Craig would pay any amount for any old crap. According to Craig, everything's great. That's just my opinion before I get a defensive comment back, take the opinion. So I reply to this guy and I say, and my opinion is you have no idea what you're talking about. Just my opinion before I get a defensive comment. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't pay any, I don't pay any amount for any old crap. You know, I don't think it's fair that he says that in a public uh, in a public forum, completely out of the blue for no reason. Um, but you know what? I didn't have a go at him. I just said, "Hey, you got no idea what you're talking about." And he comes back and he says, "You never learn. This is why everything's great and there's no bad magic out there. You never take criticism. You just bully people." Now the conversation went on and on and on and on and on, but let's just leave it there because that's something that's come up an awful lot, isn't it? Craig Petty is a bully. Anybody who doesn't like me says that I'm a bully. That's, that's what happens, isn't it? It says over and over again. This guy comes up with it. Think about it. He calls me a bully because I said that he doesn't know what he's talking about when he says that I'll buy any old crap. Because I won't buy any old crap. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I don't review because I look at it and I go, I am not going to spend 
500 quid on that because I just know I'm not going to use it. That's nuts. I do have the opinion that creators can charge whatever they want. It's the creator's opinion. Now, if they charge something and it's too expensive, then they're going to realize very, very quickly that that was the wrong call. But they can charge whatever they want to. Scott Alexander used to do that. He charged a fortune. One of my favorite tricks of all time is Scott Alexander's um, uh, Superfly. Superfly uh, Cards Across, which cost about $200 and all you got was a hanky and a stick. Um, but, you know, you paid for the routine. That's what you paid for. You paid for the routine. Um, and I would pay it again in a heartbeat. It's one of my favorite tricks. Um, but, but I won't buy any old crap. I'll buy something if I think it looks good, but it's not about whether I'm right or wrong. You know what I mean? This is a guy making a statement about me as if he knows me because he's seen me make a few YouTube videos, which is something that a lot of people do. They think they know me because they see me on YouTube every single day. So they think that they know me. They think that I, they know um, how I think. They don't know me. Very few people actually know me. My friends know me. Um, but, but here's a guy that thinks he knows me and he's making a statement saying, Craig will buy any old crap. And, but the issue isn't really about that. Like I say, the issue is about him calling me a bully. So I say, so he calls me out in a public forum, says I'll buy any old crap. This is why magic's in a bad place. I never call out bad magic, which by the way, go and ring up Peter Egging and ask him if I ever call out bad magic, uh, because I do. Um... But, you know, he, he, he makes this statement about me, which is complete and total lies. But rather than having to go at him, I just say, well, my opinion is you don't know what you're talking about. Just my opinion. And then he immediately reverts to calling me a bully, which is what happens with many, many people. You know, the uh, issues that I had with uh, a certain YouTube channel um, a little while ago. They, that guy called me a bully over and over again. I remember when I was dealing with the stuff with Lloyd Barnes and Dex, I got called into uh, the whole thing. I got dragged into it and I got called a bully. Um, I think we're throwing this word bully around a hell of a lot. I don't understand why I'm called a bully for standing up for myself. Here's the thing. Um, I, I used to get bullied at school. When I was in secondary school, I used to get bullied at school. And it stopped when I stood up for myself. And I do believe that you should stand up for yourself, but I think these people that throw the word bully around, they need to kind of really just have a fucking reality check. Because in that exchange, what exactly did I do or say to bully this person? He went on YouTube and made a statement that I bet any old crap and I'm a biased reviewer and blah, 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 and this sort of stuff. And I just went, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. And then he calls me a bully for saying I'm defensive and I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like these people don't understand what the term bullying is. And it just, it, I, I, I just don't get it. Look, here's the thing. I don't need to do this content on YouTube. I don't need to do these YouTube videos. I really don't. To be honest, I've said it in the past, it would be easier for me if I didn't do it. My schedule is insanely busy insanely insanely busy between running three companies between being a dad between managing Ryland between being a husband going out and performing creating magic constantly running around and filming stuff it would be far easier I've been up since what six o'clock this morning filming videos in my hotel room and I'm about to go off and do a 16 hour shoot for the third day in a row and then do live performances in the evening, it would be far easier for me not to wake up first thing in the morning and do a video like this. But I know if I don't do this video, it's not going to get done. And I've promised everybody on YouTube that I will put these videos up. And so these videos need to go up. I don't genuinely, genuinely, it would be easier for me not to do it. Now, this is not me saying, I'm not going to do YouTube anymore. I, this is the end of Magic TV. I've had my little thing a few months ago and I came to my senses. I love doing Magic TV and it will continue as long as I continue to feel like I'm making a difference. The second that I stop feeling like I'm making a difference, I will stop this channel in a heartbeat. Um, if I feel like nobody really wants to watch my stuff, and nobody wants to listen to what I have to say, then I'll stop this channel in a heartbeat and I don't care. But as long as I continue to feel like I'm helping people, and you know what, I spent a few days at Magic Live, as you guys know, and the amount of people that came up to me, one guy came up to me and he said, um, 
one guy came up to me and he said that uh, he found magic very, very recently, about a year ago, and it was while his wife um, was very, very ill in hospital and uh, he, he, he found Magic TV and he got into magic and it really helped him cope with all of that. And he just came up to the booth and he's just like, man, I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for you. And he came over and shake my, shook my hand. I had literally a hundred people do that over the course of, of, of Magic Live. That's why I make this YouTube channel. Those people aren't saying I'm bullying them. Interestingly, the people that normally say that I'm bullying them are the people that have an agenda. Because anybody who knows me, and again, the people that say I'm a bully, they don't fucking know me. They've never met me personally. They've never been in the same room as me. They don't know me. They think they know me. They think they know who I am and what I do. They don't fucking know me. The people who know me know that that is complete and total bullshit. And, and you know, the people that came up to me at Magic Live, that's why I do this YouTube channel. Not for the fucking dickheads and assholes that go, oh, Craig's a bully. Oh, Craig's going to bully somebody now. Fuck off. You're probably going to get told I'm a bully for telling you to fuck off, but I don't care. Fuck the fuck off. I had, I was at, um, I'm at Penguin, obviously, and um, a couple of days ago, uh, we had two people, I was on a shoot, I was in the, the back for uh, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Uh, just Because if you don't know, Penguin, there's, a, uh, there's the magic shop and then you go in through the magic shop and there's the theatre through a secret door. And I was filming with Eric Tate. And uh, Eric turned around to me and he says, there's um, uh, early on in the day, like 11 o'clock, there's somebody in the, uh, uh, in the shop to meet you. So I went into the shop. And this wonderful family, uh, a mom, a dad, and uh, uh, um, I don't want to say a kid because he wasn't a kid, a young man that had just turned 16, had literally driven about two, two and a half hours to meet me and uh, and hang out for a few minutes. And that was fantastic. And, and he was talking about how much he loved my content and how much I was an inspiration to him. And they'd literally done a five hour drive to spend like 20 minutes with me. Those are the people that I make this content for on YouTube. Um, there was another guy that came that same day later on in the afternoon. And uh, he was almost in tears because he found magic quite late in life and sort of late 50s. And um, he literally, he binges all of my content. And it was a pleasure meeting him. And, and he gave me some, some things that he'd got and um, said, look, you're, you know, you're really creative. I'd love you to come up and work, work on a trick with these things, which I am actually doing. And, and just seeing how emotional he was, that is why I do this, these videos. That is why I wake up at six o'clock in the morning to do these videos where it would be much easier for me to just lie in bed. That's why I do all of this. I do it because I feel like I can make an impact and I can help people because I never got this information when I first got into magic. And I wish there was a magic TV when I first started because it would have made things a hell of a lot easier. It would be so much easier if I didn't have to sit there doing video after video after video. But when I read the comments and I realize that it's making a difference to people, that's why I do it. So for the people out there that say I'm a bully, for the people out there that say, oh, Craig, 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 Craig's a bully. He bullies me. He bullies me because he says that I dis he disagrees with my mean comments. Well, for those people, you don't know me. But here's the simple solution. If you think I'm a bully, stop watching my content. Stop watching it. What I don't understand is the amount of people that comment on my YouTube channel saying I'm a bully or saying I'm not a nice person, but I see the metrics. They've watched my stuff. They comment on my stuff. I don't understand it. If I don't like something, I don't watch it. The, the guy that I'm talking about in his question, he comments all the time and normally it's negatively. He watches every video I put out. You know what? If I don't like doing something, I don't watch it. Stop watching my videos. If I'm such a fucking bully, if you're so annoyed that I'm so defensive, then stop watching Magic TV because I'm not going anywhere. And I'm going to carry on making content. And it's probably going to carry on pissing you off. So my advice is go find somebody else. Go watch another channel. I'm sure that you can find another one. Fuck off away from here. Okay, this video is going on way longer than I thought it was going to. So we're going to do one last one. Um, and the last one I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about... Again, several people have made the same comment. Um, which is... Um, 
it normally goes along the lines of Craig is a biased magic reviewer. It's kind of a little bit like what I was saying before. Oh, Craig doesn't buy his own tricks. He's biased. But it's kind of, they don't say that. They say, oh, I'm biased. I only give my friends good reviews. Um, it was, there was something I saw on the Magic Cafe actually as well. Um, that somebody was reviewing that. There was a thread on the Magic Cafe to do with that um, uh, Julio Monturo trick, the... Um, a little box inside the thing, a little magnet thing. I uh, can't remember what it's called. Uh, it, it's one that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago and I literally ripped it to shreds. And, uh, and somebody sat on there and said, hey, Craig reviewed this and this is, what, uh, uh, this is what he says about it. And this guy went on there and, you know, Bob <laughs> uh, went on there and he said, who doesn't like me, uh, went on there and said, well, even Craig can't this, give this a good review. He would be cancelled, you know. Kind of insinuating that I'm biased and that I only give good bad reviews and you hear it all the time the amount of times that people say and it's weird it's weird right and what's weird about it is if i give something a really good review right if i give something a really good review i'm biased i've been paid off that person is a friend of mine um i can't just give something a good review i have to have an ulterior motive but if i give something a negative review again I'm, I'm being biased and that person I don't like. And um, uh, I, I, because I don't li like that person, I'm trying to destroy them and squash them down and I'm giving their product a negative review. Which is just ridiculous, it's just insane, really, that, that people think that. Again, especially considering I'm doing this review show with Ryland. So what they're effectively saying is I'm teaching my kid to lie to thousands of people all over the internet. How do you think that fucking conversation is going? Right, Ryland, come here. Okay, um, I know this trick is really good, yeah, and I know you like it, but we're going to say it's shit because we don't like that person, so I want you to stand in front of everybody on the internet and tell everyone it's a terrible trick. Will you do that for me? Good lad. The fuck do you think that you're saying, you fucking mental prick? You think I'd do that? You think I'd have that conversation? You think I'd manipulate my child like that just so I can give something a good review or a negative review? How fucking tapped in the head do you have to be? To the people that say that I am a biased reviewer, I'm not. If I say I like something, guess what? It's because I like it. If I say I don't like something, it's because I don't like it. And that is why I pay for everything myself. Because I don't want to be beholden by somebody who has sent me a product. It happened ages ago, ages and ages and ages ago. Somebody sent me a product and I decided I, it wasn't very good. And I had a ton of stuff to review. So I just decided to just put it to one side and I thought, right, I'm just not gonna review it. Um, I'm just not gonna review it, it's not very good. And this guy harassed me and har harassed me and harassed me and he was like, why haven't you done a review? Why haven't you done a review? And I kept trying to like lead him on. I was like, oh, I'm really busy. I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. I didn't want to say to him, well, you trick shit, mate. And I didn't want to just put it on the channel and I, I, I didn't think that's fair. I didn't, because it was a really limited release and hardly anyone had it. Um, I, I, I ended up like telling him the truth and I wish I'd just told him the truth right at the very beginning and you learn from these six situations um, I, I just if I like something I'm going to say I like it if I don't like something I'm going to say I don't like it you know this um, this cafe thread uh, this guy that was saying well he have to give it a negative review because uh, it, you know it would kill him if he didn't fuck you if I right we're talking about the Julio Monturo trick now, right? We're talking about this Julio Monturo trick. And this guy's saying that I have to give it a negative review, else I would be cancelled because it's so bad. If it was a good trick, I would say it's a good trick. But if I was so concerned about, you know, because I've given Julio good reviews in the past, and he's a friend, you know, I was on the uh, trailer for um, Leviosa, and I, I've interviewed him. If I was that concerned about this, I just wouldn't have reviewed the product. I just wouldn't have put it, wouldn't have put the review up. Or I could have reviewed the product and done it in a way more subtle way and said, well, you know what, this, is a, this isn't really that great. I wouldn't recommend it, but I didn't. I went fucking hardcore on it. And I talked about how absolute fucking shit it was. That's what I did. If I had an 
if, if I was trying to, like, um, if I was only putting the review up because I was going to get cancelled if I didn't, or whatever the fuck your narrative is today, I wouldn't have gone as hardcore as I did on that review. Look, the bottom line is, if I like something, I'm going to say I like it. If I don't like something, guess what? I'm going to say I don't like it. As for this Julio Monturo trick, I thought it was a complete and total sack of shit. Everything Peter Eggings put out, I think is a complete and total sack of shit. I think there's a lot of really bad tricks out there. Hell, I've given Penguin Magic bad tricks, and I fucking work with them. And I've given them bad reviews. I've given Nicholas Lawrence a bad review, and I've just spent the last fucking few hours filming his trick and doing his tutorial for him. I am being honest. If I say something's good, I think it's good. If I say something's bad, I think it's bad. If you don't believe me, then go watch another fucking review channel and stop getting your knickers in a knot over my reviews. Because really, I only want the people watching my channel that actually believe me. And if you don't believe me, just fuck off. It's as simple as that. Okay, I'm going to say one last one. I'm going to do one last one because I've really got to go. Uh, the final the final thing is, and I mentioned this in the Q&A the other day, so it's worth briefly mentioning it again. Somebody put on the, uh, the channel the other day and said, uh, I think I've got it here, actually. Yeah. Somebody uh, from when I did the Q&A. Let me have a look. Let me find it. Here it is. Uh, unpopular opinion, most overrated and overhyped magician at this time. So uh, there's a guy that went on and said that I'm overrated and overhyped. And you know what? Thank you very fucking much, mate. I don't know who you are. I know you've brought out one mentalism trick in the last decade or whatever. Cool. Good for you. You know what? Thanks. Because you know what? In order for you to think that I'm overrated and I'm overhyped, that means that the entire community rate me. If everybody thought that Craig Petty was shit... If everybody thought that every trick that I bought out was complete and total fucking bollocks, then I wouldn't be overrated by you. Your opinion would be shared with the entire community. In order for you, Mr. I don't know who the fuck you are, in order for you to be having the opinion that I'm overrated, that means that the entire fucking community has to rate me to some level. You can't think someone's overrated if they aren't respected to a certain level. And as for the overhyped thing, you can't think someone's overhyped if every single one of their tricks dies on its ass. If every trick I bought out just completely fucking melted away into nothing and nobody bought it and nobody talked about it and it had no impact on the community at all, saying I'm overhyped would be complete and total bollocks. So you telling me that I'm overrated and overhyped, that's cool. Because translation, that means a lot of fucking people in this industry like me and a lot of fucking people in this industry buy my tricks and like my tricks. It's your opinion that I'm overrated and overhyped. Why you decided to share that on the internet and for no reason, on a random video, you decided to say I'm overrated and overhyped, I don't fucking know. I don't know what made you decide to uh, watch a fucking video of mine and go, oh, Craig's overrated and overhyped. <laughs> Oh, now I feel better. Now I've got that off my chest. I ain't got one of your videos and told you you're overrated and overhyped. You know why? You're not overrated and overhyped because before you made that statement, I had no fucking clue who you were. I had to fucking Google you to find out who you are and what you've bought one or two tricks at in the last fucking decade. Here's the thing, right? I get people like you all the time that fucking attack me. Somebody who's bought a trick out or maybe two tricks out and they haven't had an impact on this industry. They haven't actually had that trick be successful successful and so they get really fucking pissed off and then they look at me who's bringing out fucking tricks all of the time and everyone's talking about what I do and what I say and they're like well Craig Pitt is overhyped and over uh, overrated and, uh, uh, right here's the thing why don't you fucking start sorting out your own shit because all you're doing here is you're taking your own in in inadequacies and your own negativity and you're shoving it on me you want to know why everybody rates me you want to know why every single motherfucking trick i bring out is hyped to the fucking roof and the sky and back it's because i work my fucking ass off I go above and beyond everyone in this industry. When you're in bed sleeping, I'm sitting here making YouTube videos. When you're fucking sitting on the couch doing nothing, I'm working my fucking balls off doing 18-hour days in Penguin Magic, building relationships, 
and working on my brand and letting people know who I am. I go over to Magic Live. I don't get paid to do Magic Live. I go over and do Magic Live because I want to meet everyone. I want to. I want people to know that I'm there for every single person in this community. I want people to know that Craig Petty, or I want people to realize that Craig Petty is the hardest working person in this industry. And I will literally drop anything at the drop of a hat to help anybody. Anybody who wants my help with a project, anyone that wants my help, will I will do so. Anybody who wants me to help them, I will. I'm out there making things happen. Here's the thing, there's two types of people in this world. There's people that make things happen and there's people that wonder what the fuck has happened. And here's the thing, I'm out there doing it. I'm out there. What have I bought out this year? Infinity Deck, check, fucking Balls to the wall, massively successful. Evoke, check, massively fucking successful. Magic button, check, magically fucking, massively fucking successful. Mirage deck project, check, massively fucking successful. The uh, mind blocks, check, massively fucking successful. You know what? I've bought out about 10 products this year and they've all been massively fucking successful. And do you know why? It's because I'm working my balls off. I'm working my balls off, building a brand, letting people know who I am, not afraid to say what I what I think and going out there and letting people know that when you get a Craig Petty product, you are getting 150% of everything that I know. I am going to give you everything I've got. I am not going to hold anything back. And you might not like it. And that's absolutely fine because we can't all like everything. You might not like the trick, but you know that I've worked my fucking balls off to make that trick the best it can be. Can you say the same? Because I don't know who the fuck you are. And all of these people that say Craig's overhyped, Craig's over overrated. What the fuck is Craig doing? Craig can't even do a double lift. Craig can't turn over two cards as one. You know what? Maybe I can't, but let's make it. Let's take a poll. Let's see how many people know me versus you and why they know me because I'm going out there and I'm trying to help. I'm trying to put videos out there, which make a difference. And for people like you and anybody else like you that says I'm overrated and overhyped, here's the thing. Have I got an ego? Yes. Everybody in this industry has an ego. You can't be a magician without having an ego. I absolutely 150 fucking million percent have an ego and I believe in myself 100% and I believe in every single one of my products because if I don't believe in them, if I don't believe in my products, if I don't believe in me, how can I expect anybody else to believe in me as well? I believe that every single one of my products is the best product ever. And that's why I can offer it to the magic community because I believe that every single one of my products is the best product that you could ever possibly get. Now, other people might disagree with me and that's fine. That's per prerogative, no problem. You think I'm overhyped and overrated, that's cool. My advice to you is to work on your own shit rather than making random comments on Facebook about people you don't know talking about how overrated and overhyped they are because guess what? Damn right I'm overrated. Damn right I'm overhyped because every single time I bring out a product, people rate it. Every single time a new product is announced with my name on it, or even if it's a product without my name, that's not by me, but I'm part of that fucking product, there's a buzz about it. Fact. Fact. Because I work fucking hard. I work fucking hard to make sure that happens. So here's an idea. Why don't you take your opinion, take your overrated, Take your overhyped, put them together, roll it up into a little ball, turn it sideways, shove it up your ass. Because here's the thing, I'm not going anywhere. And if you don't like me, if you don't like that I'm overrated, it's ridiculous. So there we go, alternative Q&A. Got a little bit sweary there at times. Sorry about that, I'm kind of passionate. Um, but gotta get, gotta get to work. Those tricks aren't going to film themselves. Uh, do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. By the time this goes live, I should be back in the UK. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video because that's what I do every single fucking day I'm here. I will be back again with another video. If you want to join the Netflix, please do so. It's www.thenetrix.com and I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig and this is Magic TV.